Hey everybody, welcome back to Starfire Gaming. I am Sir Joseph, and this is Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We are finally back in Dresden. Uh, we are going to take a look at the Crusader map to see how things look. We're going to take a rest. We're going to talk to Anivia. We're going to talk to the Storyteller, and then we're going to go questing. So let's look at the map, see what we got going on here. All right, uh, I got. Help of the Mwangi. Three witches. Angels. Inquisitor Lightor. Oh, that's what we already talked to him. All right. There's a ton of things we can do here. Lots of demon army still floating around here. Oh, we got lots of stuff. We'll probably check those out when we get to the, you know, the big map where we move around. Events, we got decrees, we got rank ups, we've got army stuff, we've got all sorts of stuff. Uh, let's check out the army stuff here. Heaven Warriors, Royal Conscription, Vicious Debutante. Got some relics. Study the unusual crystal. Development of the art of war, strengthening diplomatic connections. Let's do these ones first. Uh, let's see, they who do not seek to know their enemy and fail to forge new paths to victory will inevitably fail. All right, so we're going to issue a decree. Strengthening diplomatic relations. Issue decree. That gives me one of those and one of those. Chanting the Voracious Jumble, an Epidemic of Secrets report. Hey, the commander's presence, the Crusades were led by Queen Galfrey, but everyone remembered that the official title, leader of the Crusaders, has not been taken away from the commander. His glory attracted many warriors, and a detachment of such volunteers has arrived. Okay. Strange disease is affecting the soldiers. Mouths grow in the victim's skin and whispers various secrets related to the events happening in the army. Healers claim that with each secret, the victim, health of the victim deteriorates. Heal the sick and prevent it. Order the, heals, order the healers to save everyone. What's this effect going to do? Plus one level to reduction of losses feet. Infirmary size increases by 5%. Well, that's always a good thing. Let's see, what's this one do? Add 9,000 leadership experience points. Well, we're going to go with this first one. We're not... Save people if we can. Best healers did everything to cure the people. Their efforts paid off. The epidemic was stopped. Now the crusade is better prepared for sudden outbreaks of the disease. Chanting the voracious jumble. The blasphemous weapon made of flesh is complete. Okay, what do we got here? Awakening the craven maw. <clears throat> 2d6 to the standard. Bludgeon, piercing, and slashing. Well, it's a lot of different types of damage. Whew. 
Fortitude save each time it tries to attack or it's unable to attack that round. That's kind of cool. Plus two speed weapon. You can never be flat footed. If you kill an enemy, you become immune to all eyesight effects for D4. Whenever the wielder of this plus three vicious weapon lands a hit on an enemy who doesn't wield any weapons, it must do a fortitude. Um, it's not that great of a weapon. Let's go with this one here. Okay. All right, we can do some Heaven Warriors. We can't do that one. Moral Conscription, Study the Unusual. Three Mendevian Cavaliers. Not going to do that. We don't know what the morale is yet. Normally the morale's up here. Well, let's go ahead and do it just in case we need morale. And let's study the unusual crystal. All right, we got angels. Colorless one. And royal conscription. All right. And we need to level these people up. Yep. 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 Uh, that's what I gotta do is manually. Gap, Piranha Strike. Uh, do 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 do. Breath of Experience, Bull Rush, Cleave. Attack you make an immediate persuasion check. It's a free action attempt to demoralize your opponent. Let's do improved critical. Or critical focus, that's the one.
Just Camellia, and then we gotta do all the mythics for everybody. Did not do their mythics last time, that's weird. Where did we get another mythic upgrade? No, we did not get another mythic upgrade, but we didn't mythic upgrade anybody else, just ourselves. Oh. Uh, no. chances. Never a bad thing to take. Mythic dodge is always a good thing to take. best jokes. Why not? Sneak attacker. All right, uh, destructive shockwave. No mythic. Dodge is always good. We'll take that. Uh, let's take Mythic Resolve. Dodge is always good. Physic toughness. And Sila is last. And we'll go with Mythic Dodge. All right. Let's go take a nappy nap. Read the Queen's letter.
are an annoying kitty cat. Were you all the way down at the bottom? All the way down at the bottom. Joseph Starfire. I don't know where you are. Are you even still alive? I don't know what to do, but I am queen and I must act accordingly. I don't know why I'm even writing this letter. You are unlikely ever to read it. Forgive me, Galfrey. All right. It's a nappy nap. You feel sorry for the cultists. What about the demons? Do you pity them as much as their victims? How can you not feel sorry for anyone? Is there anyone in this world who isn't suffering? All right. Now we're going to go talk to Anivia. Let us be off. Look who it is. Hi. Do you remember when I asked you about your dream? You said you wanted to learn how to bake bread. Could you tell me more about that? Is this for Arushilea? Uh-huh. I can see you. You can come on out. And Evia smiles at the half-hidden succubus bashfully emerging from her hiding place. Now, isn't that better? Anyways, back to the bread. And Evia sighs pensively her eyes gazing to the distance. When I was just a little snot-nosed kid, my mom hid me from our enemies in the in a temple of Desna. Ah, there's a Desna connection. Nidal, my birthplace, is a horror show. If it crumbled into the sea tomorrow, I'd throw a party. But the temple was a tiny oasis of peace and calm, hidden away inside all of the, all that. Folks in the temple knew how to laugh. They'd sing songs as they did their needlework. And in the morning, they'd bake the most fragrant bread in the whole world. I could barely see over the table, but I'd stand and watch as, they, as the cook mixed the dough, formed them into rounds, and put them into ovens. It was the happiest memory of my life. Well, of the crappy part of my life. Up until I met Beth, of course. Then, when I bailed on that, I did all kinds of scummy jobs. I crawled through marshlands. I scrambled over rooftops. I waded through sewers. I spied. I tracked. I killed. And that memory was the thing that kept me going. When I was sitting up to my eyeballs in gore and dragging myself through the slums with an arrow in my side, I remembered the smell of that bread, the crunch of the crust, how it burned my little fingers. I remembered how happy I was back then. Commander, have you thought about what you'll do after we win? I mean, once we've smashed the demons, closed the world wound, hung up our weapons, what then? I know my war will be well and truly over the morning I get up, mix up a dough, and put it in the oven. I'm going to sit there and watch it rise. Arush Leia listens to Anivia with rapt attention. When Anivia finishes, the succubus is silent for a long time and then briskly wipes her eyes. Thank you, Anivia. Desna, bless you. I think I understand now. I think I truly understand. Arushlea turns to you. You see a sparkle of hope in her eyes again, something that's been missing ever since your last visit to the world of dreams. Joseph Starfire, I... We need to go there again, to the dream world. Now I know how to solve the riddle. Please come speak to me in private as soon as you can. Not... Waiting for your answer, Arushalea walks away. Well, now we have to visit her. Anivia watches the demon go. Desna teaches that everything we do in our waking hours begins in our dreams. I wonder what my dream helped her understand. But whatever it was, may the goddess watch over her. I have to go. All right. You watch yourself now. All right, so she is not here, so we will go outside. Uh -huh. 
into the streets. So we'll find the storyteller. We'll sell stuff. Storyteller should be right there. He is. So we'll talk to him with um, Galfrey's letter. Then we'll go sell some of our stuff. And then we'll go find Arushalea. And then hopefully we can get outside. Outside Desna. Greetings, Joseph Starfire. Have you brought me a new story? You mentioned you could use the letter to tell me about Queen Galfrey's feelings. Storyteller's fingers touch the paper softly, his nail carefully tracing along the lines as if he can see them. The moon is peering into my window, the sole observer of my weakness. Dresden is quiet. Almost as if I am the only one in the fortress at this hour of the night. I am alone. Utterly. Always. I pick up the quill and shake off a drop of ink that threatened to fall on the paper. Which would have ruined what is already my third draft of this letter. Why am I writing it? He will never read it. I falter, the quill poised over the paper. But my hesitation doesn't last. I don't know where you are. My hand writes. When was this? On the eve of the Queen's departure from Dresden. The next morning she ordered her forces to march on Is. Is Dresden ever that quiet? Unlikely, but I'm telling you of Gallifrey's feelings. Galfrey's feelings. As she was writing this letter, one's perception of the outside world can vary at times. Please continue. My hand is shaking. My heart pounds in my chest like a bird trying to break free from its cage. My eyes fog over. I wipe a tear from my cheek. What is happening to me? Where did this feeling of guilt come from? I have always acted as duty commanded. Always. A deep breath. I think, of shake I think the shaking has stopped. But the hand that's holding the quill can barely move. Forgive me. I write down the last words of the letter he will never see. Forgive me. Forgive me. What exactly was Galfrey feeling? Guilt? Or something else? I cannot answer that question definitively. I merely touched upon her thoughts. Tapped into a faint trace of feelings. But I can say one thing for certain. Those feelings were strong. The pain the Queen was going through was very much real. Thank you, Storyteller. There's no need for gratitude. I rather think I should be begging your forgiveness. It seems I have inadvertently been made privy to personal matters between you and Queen Galfrey. I will try to refrain from such intrusions into your private affairs from now on. The storyteller lowers his head sheepishly. I have to go. All right. Now, come down here. Sell a ton of stuff. All right, abrupt end plus four shocking kukri. Let's hang on to that. Balanced defender. We don't need that one. Banshee's heart. No. Uh. Out of that one. Now we get rid of. We get rid of. Can't see through your tail.
So I need to keep so I can give to um, people in the party. Fifty-eight matchwork scimitars. Two soul shears, huh? All right, we're going to hang on to most of that other stuff. Bunch of stuff. Lots of stuff. Horseshoes. Severed demon heads. Got up to three of them. We don't need those. Money, 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 money. Where did she go? I wonder if she's back in the tavern. She kind of heads to that inn or the tavern whenever we have these quests for her. Come on, mouse. All right, so we're going to head to the tavern. We're going to 
talk to Aro Shalea, and then we're going to head outside. Oop, that's a jewelry artist, and that's not the tavern. I didn't want to go in there. See if you're in the tavern. There she is. Follow me. Herushalea looks at you and smiles sadly without saying a word. Let's go to your dream. Let's do it. I can't wait to finally solve this rival. Riddle. Oh. But there's a glimpse of concern appears on the succubus's eager face. My nightmare. It's still in there. Usually he doesn't show up at all. But I think he will attack us when we start altering the very nature of my dream. Get ready for battle. I'm ready. Hiroshalea touches your hand and the real world fades around you. All right. On to the dream, kitty cat. Yes, my kitty cat is sitting right in front of me, in front of my keyboard, as usual. Arushalea's dream seems even darker and emptier than before. The smell of smoke and ash linger in the cold air. You can't see the nightmare, but you can feel it watching you from the dark. The succubus approaches the table reverently, as if approaching a holy altar. Then she hesitates. When Desna asked me, what do you dream of? I didn't know anything about dreams. I've been trying to imitate mortals, but I never really understood what I was doing. I filled my dreams with so many things, but now I understand why they all burned so easily. They were not my dreams. But how should I put it? Mortals don't actually dream about objects. They dream about ideas. Filling their dreams with those items was like stealing a road sign from its stake, and then claiming I had made an entire town in my hands. Anivia isn't really dreaming about a loaf of bread. Her dream is about a whole new life, a life where there's no war, a life where she lives in her own house and bakes bread for her beloved. I'm sure that, that if I asked anyone about the things I stored here, they would tell me why those things in their dreamed worlds, a world where they find happiness. Did Anivia's words give you any ideas about how to find your own dreams? They did. Almost. Maybe. I hope so. We'll find out soon enough. This table didn't burn because it is a part of my true dream. A part of the world where I am happy. Now I just have to find out what this world looks like. Arushalea closes her eyes. The world of my dreams is so close, I can almost see it. Almost. A teapot is on the table. Arushalea is the shadow guy. Arushalea whispers quietly. You can barely hear her words. But as she speaks, the world changes around you. The smell of smoke and ash are replaced by a fragrant aroma of freshly brewed tea. The teacups are full. The steam is rising from them. There's a spot of spilled jam. Cookie crumbs. I must have baked cookies. Nightmare spawn. Planning to drink some tea. A hissing voice full of bitter hatred can be heard in the darkness. You used to drink souls before. How many living souls did you kill, you fiend? How many did you torture to death? You don't deserve a life like this. I have done many terrible things. Aroshalia's voice is quiet but firm. I have ruined many lives, and I'll be praying for long for that as paying for that as long as I live. I will fight until we close the world wound, and even after that, as long as there is evil on Galorian. But I will not give up on my dream, whatever it is. Without it, I won't have the strength to fight. I'll make you pay with your life. We will be victorious.
That was quick. Herushalia stops to catch her breath. The nightmares will never leave me alone. I know that I deserve them, but it is so hard to fight them off over and over again. Are you feeling all right? I am, I guess, as much as I can be in the current situation. Let's continue. Ero Shalea closes her eyes again. Surrounding the table, I see a house, a large spacious kitchen, a ray of sunlight coming through the window, the branches of apple trees swaying outside. You want to have a house of your own, my venomous butterfly? Demalcio's charred, ghostly face is twisted with hatred. You deprived, you deprived me of my home twice. First, you took Elysium from me. Then I found myself a new refuge in the abyss, but you've destroyed that too. And now you dare to dream of a house of your own? I have wronged you badly. I feel guilty. I'm not trying to make excuses. There's nothing I could say that would excuse what I've done. But you are dead, Demalcio. I will never forget you, but I will not let you take my life. You don't have the right to live. We cannot be defeated. Shalea looks pale as she wipes away the sweat and tears from her face. You're so close to finding your dream. You're almost there. Yes, I want to see it through to the end. A kitchen. A teapot on the table. And who's sitting at that table? Look, that's... that's me! And there's you. We're chatting, laughing. You. You're holding my hand with such tender affection. Well, not from that side of the table, I'm not. So this is my dream. All this time, my dream has been about you. About a house that we could call our own. About friendship. No, about love. And maybe even a family. Family. Isn't that the word mortals use to describe the people who fill them with happiness? The people they love and can't live without? You can't be happy, you scum. You don't deserve happiness. The nightmare's hiss grows into a deafening roar. I will be happy. She looks the monster straight in the eyes. Do whatever you want to me, but my dreams are mine forever. Charge! We won't falter! The monster is gone, and I, all is peaceful I once more. I just want to live here, in the world of mortals, with you. I have solved the goddess's riddle. This is my true dream. Okay, <laughs> start that over again. The monster is gone, and all is peaceful once more. The smell of freshly booked cookies wafts through the air. The st 
steam rises from the cups of hot, fragrant tea that have been set out on the table. Arushalea gazes around her longingly. You have never seen her so happy. Butterflies. I love you. Will you be with me? Will you share my dream? Aroshalea's slender body is bathed in a kaleidoscope of colors, and for a moment she is completely surrounded by hundreds of fluttering blue butterflies. She stares at you with shining eyes. At home together, I would fight the entire abyss to make this dream come true. We'll never be afraid again. Let the abyss be afraid. It fears and loathes everything it fails to understand. I know how demons think. They'll do everything they can to destroy us, because now they are more afraid of us than anything else in the world. What's going on? What's happening to you? Freedom. Finally, after all these years, I can feel it. The Abyss has released me from its clutches. I have solved Desna's riddle and have found my dream. I have found you. I am not a monster anymore. How do you feel? I've never felt better. Everything that I hated about myself is gone. I look at you and I don't feel hunger. I don't want to kill. All the unholy cravings I experienced as a demon, they're all gone. Now I just want to be happy, to live and to love. So your touch no longer drains the life from others? No. I am not a monster anymore. Not a predator, not a weapon. Just a woman, like any other female mortal. Aroshalea looks down at her slender fingers. Slowly, apprehensively, she reaches out to touch you. You feel the warmth of her soft skin as she gently strokes your hand. She looks at you timidly. Her trembling lips are parted slightly. Her breath is uneven. You know exactly what she wants and what she is afraid to say. Give her a kiss. Her lips tremble slightly, but she returns your kiss eagerly. She is being careful, gentle, trying not to hurt you. However, once she realizes that you remain unharmed, her timidity gives way to desire. The former succubus has long shown incredible restraint, suppressing her passions for years. And now, as her lips meet yours, she holds nothing back. This is our happiness, our dream, an Elysium of our own. The scent of flowers hangs heavily in the air as a jubilant melody fills your ears. Arushalea kisses you again and again as she whispers. All right. Now we can head out of the tower, possibly. The dream world fades away, but Arashilia is still in your arms. The kiss you shared in the dream now continues in reality. She presses up against you, and you can feel the heat of her body beneath her clothes. Do you want more? I want... I want everything. Everything I've never known before. Everything I've been waiting to experience for so long. Let's go somewhere where no one will bother us. Yes. Let's go. She squeezes your hand firmly. As soon as the you close the door of the study, the two of you fall into each other's arms, and time ceases to exist. You explore every inch of her skin and her body. One an instrument at once an instrument of torture and murder becomes a vessel overflowing with tenderness and joy. When she reaches the peak of pleasure, you smell the fragrant flowers from her dream, 
As she moans in delight, the room becomes a garden filled with the wondrous plants of Elysium. As a succubus, well, I've done plenty of things in my lifetime. But what we just did was unlike anything I have ever experienced. It was the first time I've ever felt love and tenderness. Aerosalia sighs in contentment. She breathes in deeply, inhaling the fragrance of the flowers. I was so worried that my dream world was the only place I would find redemption. I was afraid that when I returned to reality, I would be a bloodthirsty monster again. But you, you taught me to see the difference between dreams and reality. The difference between thoughts and deeds. You showed me the importance of the real world. When I took the first steps on this path to redemption, I spent so much time living inside my own head. But you changed that. You introduced me to the mortal world. You made me a part of your life. And together, we have accomplished so many amazing things. She looks around at the flowers of Elysium. Really? What did I do? So many things. There are too many to name. For instance... Arishlea thinks for a moment. What happened in Winter Sun truly terrified me. For a while, I stopped believing that my own life was real. An entire village built their life on lies. What if I had done the same? But you dispelled all my doubts. You convinced me that I was real and that my world was real too. You taught me to trust myself, to trust reality again. And I was so afraid of returning to the 10,000 Delights. I knew that I was bound to meet some of my old acquaintances there, but you protected me from them. You didn't let them knock me off balance. In the slums of Illusionera, I told you about my time in the city. I shared the one good memory I had of Illusionera, and you showed me how to turn that simple memory into a good deed. Did my actions make a difference? Did I help that small demon in any way? I don't know. But you taught me how easy it is to bring a small measure of hope and goodness into the world, and how much joy can be found in a single act of kindness. You see now? If it hadn't been for you, I would still be lost in my fears, illusions, and doubts. When we're together, what does it feel like? Feels like freedom. Impossible, indescribable freedom. I can give myself fully to you, and I'm not afraid that you'll hurt me. When I reach for you, I know my touch will bring you happiness. If the demons could feel what I feel with you, even for a moment, they wouldn't want to be controlled by anger and selfishness for another second. They'd think they have achieved true freedom, but they don't know what true freedom means. These flowers, what are they? They're the flowers of Elysium. But how did they get here? Perhaps it's a gift from the goddess. Or perhaps our happiness summoned them into our world. All I know is that it's a miracle. I can't explain how these flowers appeared, but I believe that they're a good omen. A sign of new life. Arishlea gives you a radiant smile. I don't want to leave. I want to stay here with you. I know, I feel the same. But the real world is waiting for us. So big, and yet so fragile. We'll save it. Together. And then we'll come back here. To a place as real as our happiness. We'll return to our very own Elysium. But we can stay here together a little longer, can't we? Arishalia says nothing, but leans in for a kiss. All right. Let's head on outside. We have completed the romance arc, I'm guessing. Take our standard crew with us. All right, so what are we looking at here? Morale is super high, so I guess I didn't need to do the morale thing. We can recruit. All right, let's look at our armies here. So we've got this army. 
Holy smokes, 100 angels. Five angels. You're going to join them. Got the witches. We've got paladins. Oh, that's right. Our armies got devastated by them being taken away. All right. And we don't have any generals, it looks like, either. Okay. So we've got this. We've got that one. All right. First, let's go into this army. Get us a general. Oh, we can get back our, our old generals that we had. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, can't we all right let's go back to this army Why can't we get our generals? Has he... Do I have to wait two days and 14 hours to assign a general? All right, let's see what we got here. Let's go like this. Okay, no room in that army. So we'll go back to this one. them and grab them all right not having any generals I don't want to go out and I think I've got to wait for generals so we'll come to us and I think we will go to Chili Creek Trees at home, lands of Yathlotch. All right, long run. Oh, probably should have stopped there. It's almost the hour mark. We'll do this and we'll save after this.
Chief Saul. Slowly, barely moving, a formless figure shuffles towards you. When it finally draws near, you realize it's Chief Saul. But the state of him, the wound is, desiccate, is desiccated. The wound has desiccated him, drained him of his last vestiges of strength. His clothes are caked in blood. His eyes are gazed and rolling in his head, and black saliva tri trickles from his limply gaping mouth. Saul? Is that really you? Saul, what are you doing here? Saul stares at you for a while, as if he doesn't recognize you, but his awareness slowly sharpens. Commander? To Dresden. I'm going to Dresden. Need to gather. Rescue. Easy, easy. We'll rescue everyone, all right, Saul? The commander is back. Everything is going to be fine. You're alone. Where are the other mongrels? Sheva, Malak, Hishler, they're all gone. What do you know of Sava Malak's lair? Sol gestures vaguely in a direction he came from. There. Land gives you a worried look. He's not himself. We need to get him to a healer fast. Maybe he'll remember something once he gets some rest. Well, let's escort him back to Dresden. Thank you. Sol coughs violently. Commander, you're the commander. Need to get to Dresden. There. We'll talk there. Uh, let's hope I didn't get us into a conversation we're not going to be able to finish. Without extending well over our hour like, like last time. All right. Now we can stop. All righty. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Do comments, comment, um, bet, uh, likes, subscribes. Those are the things I'm talking about. I appreciate all of that stuff. Let your friends know about the channel. Maybe they'll like it too. I have been Sir Joseph. You guys have been awesome. Until next time, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you later.